In this section, we're going to learn how to create and structure an R Markdown file. In the R Studio menu, if you're not already in your data skills project, we're going to open a project, find your data skills.rproj file, and choose that. This will switch you into the data skills project. Now, the new type of file we're going to make we go to the file menu, then new file, down to R Markdown. It should bring up a window that asks you for the title. So we'll call this one test. The author, you can change that to your name. And I want you to keep it as the default output format, HTML. We're just going to click OK there. We can get rid of the console for a minute and just have a look at this R Markdown file. So what an R Markdown file is, is a file that lets you put together text that's structured and also our code. The, this can then be rendered or knit into an output file that other people can look at that looks tidy, shows you titles, images, and code in specific formatting. Um, but we need to learn a little bit about the structure of the R Markdown file that tells the program how to create this output file. So at the top here, in the first six lines, we have what we call a YAML header. It starts with three dashes and ends with three dashes. This section is kind of picky about spacing um, and line breaks, so you need to be really careful not to change the default too much. There's a line called title, and you can change what's inside of the quotation marks to the title of your page. An author, you can also change that. We have a date, you can change the formatting of the date. And then output, this tells us that when we render or knit the R Markdown file, what we want is an HTML document, something that you can look at with a web browser. One of the advantages of the HTML documents is that you can use links. So you can link to external files or link to different sections within your R Markdown document. But you can also have output for PDFs or even Word documents. But these often require you to install other software on your computer, say to output a PDF using LaTeX, which we're not going to do in this class. So we'll only work with HTML documents here. Now, after the next three dashes is the body of the R Markdown document. We usually start with um, a setup chunk. So any R code, things that we would have written in a, an R script that we'd worked on before, they go inside of this kind of casing. So there's three back ticks. Have a look at your keyboard right now and try to figure out where the back ticks are. Um, they're in a different spot on everybody's keyboard. So three back ticks, open curly brackets, the letter R to designate that this chunk of code is going to be in the R programming language. There's a name for the chunk, and you can see that name in the outline. So if you don't have this open, click on the little outline button, and you'll see an outline of your document that gives you all of the chunks and the headers in your document. Then we have some chunk options where this one is include equals false, which means that this chunk won't be included in the output. Um, the code inside of it will run, but the, the output HTML document won't show you this chunk. And this one, the setup just sets up some options so that throughout the entire page, we know here that um, in each chunk, echo will equal true. This will make more sense later, but for now, just leave this here we can also include some libraries up here if we're going to use any of them, but we won't in this introductory document. The next part of the default document is a level two header. So say when you're working in a Word document, you can make titles and subtitles and sub subtitles. Any sort of title or header that you want to make in a Markdown document starts with hash marks. One hash mark is the top level title two is the next level header, and then three, then four, and then up to six sort of subheaders. 
If you skip a line and then just start typing text, it'll create a paragraph for you. Um, if you surround URLs with um, angled brackets, this will create a link when we render it. You can also format text with um, asterisks to make bold or italic words. Right. The next part, we have another R chunk. This one is called cars. And it takes the built-in data set cars and shows you the summary. If you want to run this code, you can click on the little green arrow at the end. It says run current chunk. And that will show you what is the summary of the cars data set. The cars data set has two variables, speed and distance. And you can get some summary data, the minimum um, quantiles, median, mean, maximum for those variables. In the demo file, the next bit is another level two header, including plots, showing you how you can embed plots. So here we have an R chunk, it's called pressure. We're going to echo equals false, which means we don't want to see this code in our output. We just want to see what the code makes. So we click the run button to see what does the code make. And it gives you a plot of the, um, the included data file called pressure. So pressure versus temperature for something. Okay. So this R markdown document, we've set up a few headers, run a little bit of code that produces outputs. How do we render it or knit it? There'll be a knit button at the top here. If we click on that, it'll ask us to save it first. So we can call it test.rmd. It'll save it into the data skills folder. And then we'll create an HTML document for you. You can view it in the embedded web browser in our studio or open it in your own web browser. And here we can see this is our, our header, the title, the author, the date that came from our YAML header. And then this first level two subtitle, our markdown, the paragraph, the link, the word knit bolded because it was surrounded by asterisks, and this first code chunk. This code chunk has been echoed out so we can see it. And then here's the output of the code chunk. The output of a code chunk generally starts with these hash marks to show you that this is output. Then we have our next level two header and a paragraph. And remember that chunk was set to echo equals false. So we're not seeing the code chunk here that created the plot, but we do see the plot itself. And then another paragraph. So we can close that and we can also see that in the files pane it's created a test.html file. So if you had closed the HTML file too early and want to see it again, you can click on it and view it in your web browser. The chapter resources contain some links to files about more things that our markdown can do but we'll learn lots about it in the course of the class. Now, if we save and close this file. At the end of each chapter, we have chapter exercises. You can download them from the internet. You can download them from the local book version, but you can also access them in our studio through the data skills package. So if we type in the console, data skills, two colons, exercise, and then the chapter number. So chapter one, what will happen is that an R markdown file called 01 intro exercise.rmd will be created in your project. Um, you can change the author to your name here. It has some setup chunks um, and questions. So you can go through these exercises and answer the questions. If you can easily answer all of the questions in the exercises, then you've attained all of the learning objectives for that chapter. Now, once you've had a good shot at creating all, at doing all of the tasks, you can have a look at the answers. 
So it's the same function, exercise, and we set answers equal true. This will create a new file that ends in the word answers, and this will give you the answers to all of the, the questions.